Hi, it's Sarah from rufflesandrainboots.com. I got a great question and I'm going to share the answer with you so everyone can see it. And the question is this. I had someone ask me if he took an image off Google, how does he get it ready to engrave on like an LED nightlight? He wanted to engrave clear acrylic and he just bought the base. And so we're going to do that as an example. So you can see all of these. I purchased this set on Creative Fabrica. If you don't have the subscription, I highly recommend it. I can put that link down below, but this is all AI generated. And we can tell because we've got some melting faces, photography mixed with AI generated clip art, and a corgi in the midst of some French bulldogs. I'm gonna take this image right here. And you can see the file type is PNG. It also will work with other file types that are non-vectors. Now this image, or this uh, notice right here, I always say display it in the original size. And that's for a couple of reasons. The first being, I don't want any edits done for me. And the second being, I want the best high quality image. And if I size this down as a PNG, it could potentially cause issues for us later. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna leave it exactly as it was. Now, when you are inside this, no matter which of the X tools you have, you're going to see there's a new menu over here called image and you only have the processing type of engrave. That's it. So before we fix uh, or before we set everything to actually vectorize this image, I'm going to fix this image. And this is going to be personal preference. So when I click on the image, the image menu comes up and I'm going to go ahead and click edit image. The first option is magic wand. The second is eraser. And those are the two you will use most often. The crop is for the overall outside of it. Like if you just wanted the head, um, but we're going to be using the magic wand to take away the background down here. Y'all that's a lot of toes. And then we're going to be using the eraser to take off this little random growth on the side of this puppy's face. So first thing you can zoom it um, and then we're going to take off all the majority of this. If we can get it close, good enough. And then we're going to drag this down a little bit to a smaller size. And then we're just going to acquiesce to this. Oh, even the color. There's a little bit of color underneath there. Now, we can get this and fine tune it a lot more. And I'm going to show you that in another window. So, so far, we've used remove the background, which is called what? Magic Wand. And we've used the eraser tool. So when we hit save, now our image still a rasterized image, it's going to be uh, now minus those two pieces, right? Now what I wanna do is I want to create a different tail. I mean, we're not even gonna create a tail in the middle of the back. We're gonna remove this tail. But when I'm looking at this image, I'm not gonna change anything until I actually vectorize it. So I'm gonna click on this, our image menu comes up and we're going to select trace image. Now it generates a preview. Every single change you make, it generates a preview. You do want to go slowly and make sure that the preview generates every time you make a change. So if you watch this little area in here, I am guessing, I don't know what that is, but if you watch this area in here, <clears throat> as I change the fuzziness threshold, you're going to see details disappear. Now that doesn't have to be a bad thing, but right now we just lost our nose. So we want to make sure that we're not losing too much detail and we're not adding a whole bunch of detail that we do not need. So it, this really doesn't matter because this whole nose is messed up anyway, but I'm going to hit stays. So now you see you have all these little squares and rectangles all over our little bulldog. If we just move it over, you can see we had grouped images in both orange and black layers. We're going to go ahead and ungroup and then we're going to come to our layers menu and you're just going to select orange and then we're going to group that together. And the reason I'm telling you this is you can look at this image with the orange pieces added and then if I select the group and turn it off, does that look like a clearer image? And if you are unsure, you can just highlight it and select engrave now I'm going to put that orange sack on. We can also select engrave. And now you can see on your engraving, if you want shadows and a whole lot of tones, 
uh, you can put that on. I, however, really don't like it. So I'm just going to delete and I'm going to go with that. Now, again, we could fix this in here. I'll show you how, but first I have to get rid of this tail. It's bothering me on a level. I just can't explain. Look, what's a tail in the middle of a puppy's bag? All right, I'm going to show you this so you can see an engraving. We'll do a different color. And all I'm going to do, so I'm actually going to unlock that. You want to get as much of it all at once as possible. So anything that's actually not uh, connected, you do want to cover. Every million pop up, except this outline, twist, and we're going to lock that. Now, I should only have the outline and this, and then we need to be that. All right, so now, remember what we want to do? We want to go in here and fix this. I'm going to go ahead and melt that in, too, that doesn't matter. And this is, may take a little couple seconds to load because there should be a billion little bots. There are. Now you want to zoom in as best as you can on some of these because it's pretty slow to load. I'm just going to highlight as many of these little circles as I can and we're going to take them away. What this is going to do is it's going to change the path. You see how there's nothing like really sticking out down here now? We have to do the same thing up here. And I went to try the we'll see. There you go. That's good enough for our example. Oops. That's good enough for our example art. Let me hit command zero. All right. So right now, let me go ahead and unlock that. This is how our piece would engrave. Now, as you can see, we would want to mirror this side. I mean, it, you don't have to mirror it, but if you wanted to, you could do the same thing. So we could come in here and do ungroup. We could come in here and edit nodes. Oh, for the love of the Let's just go ahead and get somewhere in a list of 100 range. If you hold down space, you can move your entire artboard without affecting anything. All right, so randomly, nothing is selected. You can see I have an arrow. When you put it over an existing task, you get a node pen. And so if we add like we can see, I'm going to take and drag that node. We can do any of that kind of stuff that we want because now we're in node management. So let's say if we wanted to add, um, I'm going to have to get it a little bit further. This tool. Much better. So you can see in here. All right. So let's see. We can add a vector or add a node. I'm going to add it to the top line. And we're going to pull it up to just mirror mirror the other side this like point where we pull these out these two I'm just gonna highlight these two and click the shift arrow you need the too much too much too much and I'm actually gonna remove that and so it throws that into a nice little a straight-ish line. Let's hit done and see. Oh, their side is super messed up, though. Um, well, anyway, you could fix that, again, just by going in and removing nodes, adding nodes, whatever you would like. All right, so let's hit Command-0 to get out. And again, we would want to group all of that together. That's our single piece. To be honest, I'm okay with this guy. So I, instead of just grouping, now that I'm okay, I'm actually just going to outline this guy entirely. This is our engraving, okay? Now, because he wanted to do an LED nightlight, so he already bought, like, the base, and he wants to do an LED nightlight engraving in clear acrylic cup. So what you would do is you would create an outline, whatever size you want. You can make it a lot bigger than that if you would like. There you go. There you go. It's chunky. I turned off the add inner outline and then I'm going to hit OK. And you see this outline, I'm going to move it to red. I like engraving to the blue. So this is going to show me the outside line will be cut. So we need to indicate. There we go. That one needs to be cut and this one's already well in frame. So we're good. So that right there is the start of it. Now he would measure the whatever base rectangle he has. And what we would do is we would add it. Let's pretend it goes from here. We'll go ahead and have left in. Let's pretend it goes from like the white edge to the white edge. 
and it does it, I have no idea. I don't know which one can, but they supply. But you see, and it may be a little easier for you to turn off this puppy. And you can see if we put these two to engrave, you can see there, this would be the base and you would measure how high of a rectangle you would need and how wide of a rectangle you would need. The depth would already be provided for you, hopefully it's one eighth or one quarter or whatever. But what we're gonna do is now that we've added them, we can just combine them. Now, if you don't like the little cutout in the center, I don't, you just take another shape over top of it and combine it up. And now we can go and change this back to cut turn back on our little puppy dog and now we have a fully ready file where you would put in your engraving settings I have to mess with that but you would put in your engraving settings put in your cut settings and you would be off and done I hope that helps to tell you how to change a PNG or non raster or non vectorized image into a vectorized image if you have any questions on this just let me know down below and I'll help out where I can Thanks for watching. Please like this video and subscribe for more laser crafting fun.